I'm nervous a little bit and I've prepared cue cards because I honestly don't remember a time in my life where I set very precise goals. Um, I had very broad goals as a kid. I wanted to be a fashionable lawyer, I remember very clearly. I wanted to be an amazing mommy and wife. And I, I wanted to be the best me I could be because that's what my parents told me I had to be. Not, don't follow anybody else. You know, you're my firstborn dad used to say, you could be the best you. Made a lot of sense to a four-year-old kid. Even at 16, it didn't make <laughs> that much sense to me. And reflecting a little bit on uh, my life, um, I realized that I didn't have that much to say <laughs> this afternoon to a large extent, so I started to do a little bit of research into some of the people I admire. Um, some we know very well and probably also admire, like the Oprah Winfrey's of the world, the Nelson Mandela's, others who have done phenomenally well. Um, and we're not so sure how we feel about them, like Ted Turner and Jack Warner. And yeah, amazing guys, very well accomplished, those two gentlemen particularly. But they seem to both miss that little box in their brains, you know, that box that we all have, where you check a thought before it comes out your mouth, <laughs> and totally lacking. But what delightful men in their own right. And I've learned a lot um, from them, and there are lots of similarities in, in our experiences. I recently, well, not recently, a couple of years ago, I read Ted Turner's uh, biography. And he like many of us, he wasn't so sure where he was going to go in his life. You know, his dad was in the advertising business. His father was the king of billboards um, in southern USA, generally. The whole south, which is a lot of billboards. And um, he just wanted to one-up his father. He just wanted to take advertising to another level. Because when he was coming up, advertising was moving into um, the uh, digital TV era. and he couldn't get into mainstream television, so he said to himself, you see those little odd cable companies, these little independents all over the place? I am going to make sure that I corner the market in terms of advertising on cable. And from that, I'm trying to, 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 to get his ads, place his ads in the quality programming he wanted and couldn't find it. The, the, the idea for CNN came to, his, to, to him. And very uh, piecemeal sporadically. He didn't dream it. He didn't wake up one morning with a big, I am going to create CNN. <laughs> didn't happen like that at all for Ted Turner. Didn't happen like that for Colin Powell. Certainly did not happen like that for Mr. Nelson Mandela. The man still makes up his bed to this day. Because <laughs> in his head, he's not... Madiba, Nelson the Great. He is simple, humble Nelson Mandela. And in my own experience, I think about the things that really changed Wendy's course, um, you know, from universe to the birth of my son, to going to this school. Um, a lot of it happened by chance. A lot of it uh, was not terribly deliberate. It's what I did with, with those by chance opportunities. The, what I'm trying to say is that, like Ted Turner to some extent, like Mandela, like Larry Joseph, and like so many others, what really sets you apart in my analysis um, and what helps you to keep achieving and moving beyond those achievements that seem so tremendous is the recognition of opportunities when they arise 
and to a large extent a positive attitude like is your glass half full or half empty um, is you know when life throws you a lemon you know do you gripe or do you like whip up a margarita <laughs> I go with whipping up a margarita almost every single time um, the Recently, I would, the last five years have been some of the most challenging and the, the most enjoyable years of my life. Um, five years ago, I gave birth to my son, which by all accounts should have been exceptionally traumatic um, because I was so unknown for uh, relationships, anything related to, <laughs> to um, uh, intimacy. To a large extent, you know, uh, all people saw me, uh, I learned uh, during that experience very much as almost a modern day Virgin Mary, but not quite. <laughs> and that's because I purposely never put that part of my life out there. Um, my, my private life, as it were. Not that I ever uh, uh, hid or pretended to live in a way in, in, that was other than what I presented. It's just that when you're in the public eye, you know, people uh, tend to focus on what they see most of. Um, you know, I'm quite sure that Mandela and we know Ted Turner and Jack do it sometimes, but Oprah flips the bird occasionally if they get upset but that's not who they are fundamentally. They are generally very decent human beings. And if you are, what I've learned over the years is that if you are well known, all popularity, so-called celebrity does, is amplify um, your traits, your characteristics. Um, you know, so if you are like Oprah, who I think is a excellent, an excellent communicator at, at heart and a social worker. Um, you just come across as the best, the greatest one there is. She is a phenomenal businesswoman too, but if you look at the pattern of her life and all of the goals she has achieved, all of the amazing things she has achieved, she uses them consistently to help others. And that's what she gets off on. That's what I think gets her up on a morning. So that's her big, broad goal. Now, when Oprah started that television show, uh, how many ever years ago, um, I don't think, I honestly don't think Oprah Winfrey had the intention of becoming this super billionaire, owner of her own network, blah, blah. Um, Oprah admits that she enjoyed reading very much, she enjoyed communicating very much, and loved to talk just couldn't help herself and, 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 and enjoyed knowledge tremendously and wanted to share that. And that passion drove an entire industry. Um, you know, Nelson Mandela just wanted to free his people. You know, I'm quite sure, you know, for all those years, he didn't think that he would have, he, his plan was necessarily to change the world, to change his country in the way he did. Yes, he had a goal, uh, he had focus in terms of freeing his people, but um, his objectives for his life uh, seem to be very much like Oprah, being the best them they, they can be. They both blazed trails um, in ways in which we as people never have done before. Um, and I hope I am being the best Wendy I can be at any particular time. And I'm taking advantage of the tremendous opportunities that come my way. And as I, as I said, as I mentioned, for me, and, and in terms of looking at the persons I really admire, a few of whom I've mentioned, they really take life's challenges and make tremendous opportunities um, out of them. The guys I admire, uh, to a large extent, um, and in terms of moving through each phase uh, of my life, are also the ones who have 
a certain level of integrity, not a certain, a great deal of, of integrity, and are just honest with themselves. And one of our speakers spoke about that a little, a little earlier, the importance of knowing who you are, because that's how you become the best you you can be, by really being in touch with who you are. That sounds great, but I think I only really begun to understand the, the, that phrase in raising my son, Elan. I'll give you a little example of how, and there have been many instances in the last five years of how uh, Elan has helped me in terms of my honesty, acceptance of who I am, and moving beyond those, those limitations, and setting new goals, and achieving those, and, and moving, and moving, and moving. The best example for me is addressing sexuality. Something that, as a UN Goodwill Ambassador, I've talked about extensively. I've put it all out there in uh, uh, my book. And in interfacing with my child, it's unbelievably scary. Forced me to ask myself a few questions. Uh, a few months ago, in August of last year, Elon was Elon is born in April, so he was just after his fourth birthday. A few days before he was going to Atlanta to visit his dad, he said to me, one morning as he's getting off the bed, his bed, I go to his room to wake him up and uh, hang out with him a little bit before I go to work. As he's getting off his bed, he says to me, mm, Mama. Sometimes when I'm getting off my bed, my penis feels so nice. <laughs> I wanted to die. And I think of myself as a very evolved, very comfortable in her skin, young woman, very liberated, sure of who I am. I step back. All of this happened like in nanoseconds, and I said, Elon, that is lovely. <laughs> I'm not joking. Honey, that is arousal. That's your sexuality. Big words for a four-year-old. Arousal, Mama said, yes, that's that nice feeling, honey, and you should enjoy it. He's like, yes, <laughs> I do. I, I said, but you can't spend your entire days, live, day and night, living for that experience. You enjoy it. When it goes in, there's a time and a place, like everything else, honey, when it's appropriate. Like I've taught him chocolates and sweets only after a meal to close your appetite. But you can't sit all day long and eat sweets in very much the same way. You enjoy your arousal. But you can't run around all day long trying to achieve that feeling to the detriment of everything else in your life. And that was good for him. At that point, he got it. That forced me to think a lot about, you know, I had spent so much time giving speeches on, 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 on youth sexuality, and here is my youth, <laughs> you know, just mentioning very casually his sexual awakening, and it rocked me to the core. And in doing my homework and thinking about my own experience, I realized that that's not something we're terribly comfortable talking about at all. I am, that's a goal for Wendy, and, 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 and that's a very, very important goal for me. Why? Because we lambaste our West Indian men, particularly us ladies here. <laughs> the degreed ones, the ones who are terribly professional, they don't know how to deal with us, blah, 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 blah. But we are raising our young men. And as a society generally, we are raising our young people, each other, to be very uncomfortable with our sexuality. So how do we move beyond that? Think about it. You, with everything, with homosexuality, with sexuality, period, with your um, next assignment, you only get comfortable with anything when you understand it, you internalize it, you apply it to you, your circumstances, and then you move beyond it. You can't share if you have nothing to share. So I did, you know, quite a bit of, of, of homework after that. Am I approaching this thing with Elon the right way? 
should I, um, you know, uh, speak to someone, a therapist, somebody, I need to talk to somebody. Did quite a bit of reading and actually spoke to someone, spoke to someone who is a therapist, who does this on a daily basis. Luckily, a friend of mine and her answer was, you know, Wendy, I can't even, I didn't even have that conversation with my children. She's a little older than I am. And her kids are now young adults, past college. She's like, and this is what I do every single day. I could give everybody else's child and everybody else on this planet advice, but in terms of interfacing with my own at that intimate level, almost impossible. Now I realize, now that you guys <laughs> have me here today, <laughs> having this conversation with you, that that's a goal for me. A goal that I had no intentions of. You asked me the day before, Elon said to me, Mama, mm, my penis feels nice. I would have never thought that changing the view of a, a young man in terms of sexuality and how he addresses his sexuality and his level of comfort with his sexuality is a goal of mine. But it certainly has become that. You know, I have this conversation regularly with my girlfriends now. I'm having it with you now because I hope after today, this is something <laughs> when your kids come to you and want to talk about their sexuality, you're going to swallow like me, hopefully, and go brave. Honesty, being in touch with who you are and your limitations and moving beyond it. For me, that is probably the most potent example of that in the last year or so. And then moving beyond your limitations. I thought about a couple of other um, characteristics that Everyone who is able to do that, who's able to move beyond those goals that seem so amazing, how do they do that? How do they keep morphing into new, interesting, exciting goals and, and, and tremendous levels of success? They're not afraid to fail. You know, coming back to Ted Turner, you know, he said in Corby Ted, in his book about his life, that he doesn't see his so-called failures as failures. They are lessons in how to win. And that really stuck with me. Lessons in how to win. Our culture, I think the world over, but Trinidad and Tobago uh, and the Caribbean particularly, our school system is where Britain was to a large extent at our independence in the early 60s. And uh, we are from birth almost, not from almost, from birth, told that failure is a bad, 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 bad thing. That having setbacks means that you will never be able to, to overcome them. Consistently, those setbacks for me throughout my life, looking at them now, have always spurred me on to achieve in spite of. And I'm not sure where that comes from. Maybe it's the, the hard work that my both parents put into my sister and I and the exposure we got. Um, for two seemingly simple people, they were very, everything was okay. Does that make sense? Um, but they never cleaned up our mess for us. And Larry talked about this a little earlier. And in terms of moving beyond your limits and moving beyond those goals that seem so grand, that's very important. Being able to make your mistakes, but clean up your mistakes too. You know, today, and it's hard, let me tell you, a lot of my friends, a lot of, 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 of uh, young adults who have kids of their own uh, spend an unbelievable amount of time trying to clean up their, their kids' mistakes. It's okay 
to dig your way out of a hole. The other thing that, and this is the last, Josh, how am I doing on time? <laughs> the last thing um, I want to say is that perseverance is absolutely important in achieving and moving beyond um, your, your goals. And why? Because, as Larry said, as I'm saying now, it never comes easily. The things worth having in life never, ever do. And you don't stay on top of your game. You don't move uh, beyond the here and now if you don't have perseverance, if you don't have the wherewithal, the metal, to keep going and going and going and going. And I'll give a couple of examples in my own life and then another friend of mine whom I beat up on regularly because he presents himself as such a lima slacker. Um, I don't know what he calls himself now. Um, Sean, Puffy, P. Diddy, Combs. This is a guy who at the start of his career, you know, before there was Crystal, Kim, and JLo, left Howard University every single Thursday afternoon to go to Uptown Records and wash Andre Harrell's car. I'm not joking. He was so determined to break into the music business, and via that particular company, because he liked the direction in which they were going, and he thought it was the best place for him, knowing what his passions were, his skill sets were, you have to appreciate. You know what is happening in the United States now? It's winter. You know what's been happening for the last few months in America? I want you to imagine as a relatively struggling Howard University student, getting in your car, or getting on the train rather, every Thursday, and going to New York City to wash the car of the president of a record label. It took Puffy roughly four months of washing Andre Harrell's car before he was allowed into the building. Less than 10 years later, Puffy hired Andre Harrell to run his company. Andre Harrell has since been an employee of Sean P. Diddy Combs. Total focus, total determination, perseverance like you cannot imagine. A few lessons for me. I'm facing quite a transformation now professionally. And once you've achieved a certain level of success, comfort in a particular area, it's sometimes very hard to make that adjustment. But I'm quite sure I'm going to have a couple of failures, but I'm very, very determined to continue progressing, moving. This is the year of building w Wendy and taking the Caribbean with me.